Hello everyone. Now the topic for discussion is surgical orthodontics. Surgeries can be of two types. It can be either minor surgical procedures or it can be major surgical procedures. Minor surgical procedures are all in office procedures. It can be done on the dental chair uh, just by giving local anesthesia. There is no need for giving general anesthesia. But major surgical procedures need to be done in hospital and it requires the patient to be given general anesthesia. Various types of minor surgical procedures include extraction, surgical uncovering of teeth, phrenectomy, perecision, corticotomies, transplantation of teeth, etc. Whereas major surgical procedures include orthognatic surgeries, surgical repair of cleft lip and palate, surgically assisted rapid maxillary expansion, and uh, cosmetic surgeries. Coming to minor surgical procedures, extractions. Extractions is one of the most commonly done surgical, minor surgical procedures in conjunction with orthodontic therapy. Various types of extractions are done that includes therapeutic extractions, serial extractions, and extractions of impacted supernumerary and uh, ankylosed teeth. First coming to therapeutic extractions. Therapeutic extractions are the extractions uh, which are usually done in order to gain space. They are most commonly done in orthodontics whenever there is crowding, required amount of teeth are extracted and uh, how much amount of uh, space is required is first calculated and then teeth if required it is extracted. So most commonly in order to for gaining the space teeth are extracted. These type of extractions are called as therapeutic extraction. But care must be taken and uh, before doing therapeutic extractions complete uh, pre-extraction evaluation has to be done. And while extraction labial that is buccal and the parietal plates have to be preserved and as a traumatic extraction should be uh, as possible should be done so that uh, the uh, post extraction uh, tooth movement should not be affected. Next coming to serial extractions. Serial extractions is nothing but extraction of certain deciduous teeth followed by extraction of certain permanent teeth so as to allow all other remaining teeth to properly erect in their correct position. It is actually done during the mixed dentition period when there is severe ass lead deficiency exists. Actually serial extraction is another a complete big topic which will be dealt in another class. Extraction of supernumerary impacted and ankylosed teeth. Extraction of this supernumerary impacted and ankylosed teeth is also very much important. If supernumerary or ankylosed teeth are left un, uh, are left uh, without, remo uh, without removing them, it will affect the orthodontic root movement of other teeth. Hence, proper uh, extraction of these teeth should be done. And before doing extraction of these teeth also, complete thorough evaluation of their exact location and correct approach uh, should be done. They are usually approached from either palatal or the buccal aspect. And after uh, uh, evaluating the correct approach, full thickness flap is reflected. Teeth are extracted without causing any damage to the adjacent tooth roots and again the flap is positioned back and it is properly sutured. Here we can see a condition of crowding wherein uh, anterior teeth is being extracted. These are nothing but additional teeth which are present. And then uh, we can see how the teeth are coming in proper place. These are usually therapeutic extractions are usually done in order to gain space. Next is surgical uncovering of impacted teeth. Impacted teeth is also one of the most commonly seen in orthodontic patients. Usually, uh, many patients usually have impacted canines. So, if the canine is present in its proper position within the bone, it can properly be brought into the arch. But if it is in an unfavorable position, it has to be extracted. So, surgical uncovering of an impacted tooth usually consists of following steps. First is proper evaluation of a tooth position has to be done. That whether the tooth is where exactly the tooth is positioned. This can be evaluated by taking radiographs. Radiographs can also be taken by slop technique. That means two radiographs have to be taken in a right angle technique. This will indicate the exact position of a tooth. Then evaluation of favorability. Whether proper favorable path is present to bring the impacted tooth into the arch. Means while we are trying to bring the tooth into the arch, it should not cause any damage to the adjacent tooth roots. Next is evaluation of adequacy. Whether adequate amount of space is present in the arch so that the tooth can be brought into the arch, it has to be evaluated. Then surgical uncovering of the tooth and any uh, if bone is present it has to be removed. Properly this uh, um, mucosa covering the impacted tooth have to be incised and the, any covering bone which is present it has to be removed by using a burr and fixing of the attachment. This is followed by placement of any metal crown with a hook on the impacted tooth or by placement of any bondable attachment. After this a ligature wire is tied to the bondable attachment and it is then tied to the main arch wire so that with the application of continuous force on monthly interval activation, slowly the impacted tooth ultimately comes into the arch. <clears throat> this is how an impacted tooth is surgically uncovered. And now the attachment will be placed 
and it will be brought into the R. If it's extraction is required, then it is extract. Next is phrenectin. Actually, labial frenum uh, prior to the eruption of the teeth is uh, attached on the parietal aspect near to the incisive papilla region by means of a number of fibers. As the teeth start erupting, the position of the frenum changes and it goes more apically. But in few patients, this thick labial frenum persists. <clears throat> and because of the presence of this thick labial frenum, the two incisors cannot come close to each other and, and a thick labial and midline diastema usually exists. Hence, this frenum has to be removed. This is called as phrenectomy procedure. Presence of the free, thick labial freedom is actually uh, evaluated by using Blanche test. <clears throat> there are two school of thoughts. One school of thought says that freedom should be performed prior to the orthodontic treatment and the orthodontic treatment should be started. Another school of thought says that it should be done after orthodontic treatment so that it will prevent the formation of scar. Next is corticotomy. Corticotomy is a minor surgical procedure wherein cuts are made uh, in, uh, with, uh, in the, within the cortical bone in between the adjacent tooth roots. These cuts are made parallel to the long axis of the tooth root and these vertical cuts are then connected by horizontal cuts. These cuts can be made with the help of surgical burr or with the help of piezotome. <clears throat> the main principle behind this is it alters bone metabolism and when the forces are applied, uh, it initiates rapid acceleratory phenomena and tooth movement takes place more faster. Next is perecision. It is also a minor surgical procedure. Actually, immediately after orthodontic treatment, Teeth usually tends to return back to their former positions, uh, which they were former prior position. Most common seen with respect to severely rotated teeth. Actually, <coughs> teeth are provided by means of two types of fibers. Many fibers are present, but these two fibers, that is principal fibers of periodontal ligament and supracrustal gingival fibers. Principal fibers of periodontal ligament takes about four weeks of time to adapt to a new position, whereas supracrustal gingival fibers takes about 40 weeks of time to adapt to a new position. During this time period, if uh, uh, and if proper retention is not maintained, the teeth will usually tend to relapse. Hence, a perecision is nothing but a small minor surgical procedure wherein a surgical scalpel is introduced into the sulcus to mm apical to adnarchus, and this these supracrustal gingival fibers are cut off so that uh, this will prevent again uh, uh, again uh, rotation uh, uh, rota rotating back of the teeth to the uh, former position. These were all minor surgical procedures. Now let us see what are various major surgical procedures. As I've already said that major surgical procedures consist of orthognathic surgeries, cosmetic surgeries, surgical repair of cleft lip and palate, and surgically assisted rapid maxillary or palatal expansion. Any regardless of surgical procedure, it consists of following steps. First is diagnosis, pre-surgical orthodontics, mock surgery, surgery and stabilization, post-surgical orthodontics. First coming to diagnosis, that is pre-operative evaluation. This includes general medical evaluation. First, complete medical evaluation of the patient has to be done. Whether the patient is medically compromised, any underlying systemic illness is done have to be evaluated because this should not deteriorate the medical condition of the patient. Second, social psychological evaluation, social status of the patient, psychological evaluation of the patient to know what are the psychological expectations of the patient with the surgery this has to be done prior to do, prior uh, for prior to preparation of the patient for surgery cephalometric evaluation to know which skeletal bases are at fault complete cephalometric evaluation most commonly burston cephalometric analysis and all other analysis which will help us to evaluate whether maxilla is at fault or mandible is at fault or both are at fault have to be evaluated radiographic examination iops panoramic radiographs, submento vertex position, all these projections have to be done so as to know uh, the proper uh, positioning of the jaw bases. Study model evaluation. Study model evaluation is done in order to evaluate the occlusion from all the three planes of space. And TMJ evaluation, inspection, palpation, auscultation, proper examination of the TMJ so as to find out whether in, if there is any abnormal sounds, everything has to be done. Next coming to pre-surgical orthodontics, that means preparation of the arches prior to surgery. Tooth alignment within the arches. Correct tooth alignment within the arches have to be done. This includes closure of any spaces, relief of any crowding, derotation of the teeth. This all has to be done prior to the surgery. Alteration and coordination of arches. Proper coordination between upper and lower arches should be done. Any transverse discrepancy in the form of cross bites, scissor bites have to be corrected prior to the surgery itself. Next is incisor inclination. Like in case of class 2 division with Malakuri, there is severe incisor proclination. Is there. The proclination, how much it can be reduced, had to be reduced prior to surgery so that during the surgery, correct 
upper and lower as relationship could be achieved. In case of a uh, class to diff to, where this retroclination of the teeth is there, that is also has to be these the, in, under these conditions teeth has to be proclined so that desirable positioning of the jaws can be done at the time of surgery. The last step in pre-surgical orthodontics is decompensation. Like with the nature itself, if a child is usually born with class two uh, with class two skeletal bases, then lower anterior will little bit be proclined and upper will be a little bit retroclined so that to compensate this skeletal discrepancy. In case of class three patients, when there is prognathic jaw, lower incisors will, will be a little bit retroclined. This is also in order to compensate the under uh, the overlying skeletal discrepancy. So this compensation has to be decompensated, means these compensations has to be removed so that the jaws can be placed at their correct position during the time of surgery. This step is nothing but called as decompensation, means we are decompensating the natural compensation what have occurred. Next is mock surgery. Following this or decomposition and everything, now the casts, impressions are taken, casts are put, their articulated hinge articulator, adjustable articulator and uh, cuts are made so as to evaluate. Uh, the exact what uh, uh, results will achieve during the time of surgery. This is nothing but called as mock surgery. Next coming to surgery and stabilization. We will just have a brief look of what are the various types of surgeries for various types of malocclusions. In case of maxillary prognathism, simple maxillary segmental anterior setback can be done and the maxillary can be positioned at the correct position and splinting can be done. This is the picture where we can see severe maxillary anterior prognathism is there. Cuts are made and anterior segmental osteotomy is done and maxilla is properly positioned and splinted. In case of maxillary retrognathism, if maxillary maxilla is present backwards when compared to mandibular, then leaf out one osteotomy is done and maxilla is uh, positioned at its correct position, it is advanced and splinting is done. And this is the patient showing leaf out one osteotomy, incision is made, complete mucopyrosis flap is reflected, cuts are made. Repositioning of the maxilla to the correct position is done and finally fixation with screws is done. Mini plates and screws. Next, in case of mandibular prognathism, that class 3 patients, sagittal split osteotomy will be done when the mandibular setback will be done. Required amount of bone is removed and mandible is positioned properly and splinting with the screws and plates will be done. And this diagram is indicating how mandible is pro prognathic. Cut is made, required amount of bone is removed, mandible is again positioned back to its correct relationship and splinting will be done. In case of mandibular retrognathism, like in case of class 2 cases, if the fault is within the mandible body, that means if the length of the mandible body is less, then so that is ostrotomy is done, advancement is done, it is, sorry, retrognathism. Uh, if the length of the body, length of the mandibular body is less, so that is ostrotomy will be done, advancement will be done, splinting is done. And in case body will be normal, but the chin is rear, uh, chin is positioned backwards, then sliding advancement genioplasty will be done, and the chin will be positioned properly. In case of open bite conditions, there can be three types: dento alveolar open bites, skeletal open bites with class one or class two bases, skeletal open bite with class three bases. In case of dento alveolar open bites, segmental osteotomy if required in maxilla will be done. Sometimes may even be required in the mandible; it will be done. In case of skeletal open bite with angles class 1 or class 2, these are the cases which are considered as vertical maxillary access. They usually require leaf out one, osteo uh, one osteotomy procedure with maxillary impaction so that to position the maxilla properly and to connect the open bite. In case of skeletal open bite with class 3, these are not vertical maxillary access patients. Here mandible is at fault. That means there is excess length of the mandibular body. Under such circumstances, segment uh, uh, segmental uh, uh, sagittal, sagittal split mandibular osteotomy will be done, setback will be done and proper positioning of the mandible and backward and upward position will be done so that open bite gets closed and proper positioning of the mandible can be done. In this diagram we can see how the <coughs> sagittal split osteotomy is done. This is a, this is a uh, B, uh, this diagram indicates B category where the skeletal open bite with angles class 1 or class 2 is there. So how advancement will be done and proper positioning of the mandible will be done so as to close the open bite. Next is deep bite. Sometimes there will be excessive overlap between upper and lower arches. Open bite is nothing but lack of vertical overlap between upper and lower arches. Opposite to this is deep bite wherein there is excessive overlap between upper and lower arches. This includes lower anterior dento alveolar segment and osteotomy. And since deep bite means excess overlap, downward and Backward positioning will be sorry, downward and forward positioning of the jaw will be there so that lower incisor segment will come in proper relationship with the upper arch and deep bite will get corrected.
So this was all about minor and major surgical procedures. Thank you.